Hello dear students. Today our topic of deliberation is freedom of religion part first. Before going through this lecture, first let's have a look on its objectives. To understand the religious freedom in India. To understand the definition of religion under Indian constitution. To discuss the restrictions on religious freedom in India. The tradition of religious freedom has its roots in Indian history. Ashoka in his inscriptions way back in 3rd century BC has mentioned and granted this freedom by accepting the plural nature of the Indian society. The Mughal Emperor Akbar has also nourished religious freedom during his rule. The Sikhs have also respected the religious freedom of the people in India. India has even acted as a refuge place for those who were persecuted on religious grounds in their countries. The recent example is the Tibetan refugees who were given asylum in India long ago. This idea of religious tolerance was given place in constitution of India after independence. The inclusion of the word secular in Indian constitution implied that state shall not discriminate among its subjects on the basis of religion. All persons in India are free to profess their religion freely without any favor or state interference. The government has in order to further strengthen the religious freedom established a separate ministry to look after the minorities and in order to safeguard the interests of minorities a state has established a national commission on minorities. Religious tolerance and to treat every religion equally and without any favor is the essence of secularism. Secularism was respected for all religions and religious groups. The state in India cannot profess a particular religion. The Indian constitution discussed the religious freedom in Article 25 to 28. India is a secular state and state does not adopt any particular religion. The people are free to adopt and profess any religion. To understand the concept of religious freedom, often a reference is made to Australian and American decision given by their respective courts in these countries. The first amendment to the US constitution lays down, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Similarly, the section 116 of the Commonwealth of Australian Act says, the Commonwealth shall not make any law for establishing any religion or for imposing any religious observance or for prohibiting the free exercise of any religion and no religious test shall be required as a qualification for any office or public trust under the Commonwealth. The Indian courts have relied on the concept of freedom of religion provided by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. The Madras High Court in Nam Budiripad vs. State of Madras rightly made a distinction between the two parts of the First Amendment of U.S. Constitution. The first part prohibits the establishment of any religion and second part guarantees freedom of religion to all persons. The word secular and the idea of secularism is the backbone of the Indian constitution. Religion is an individual affair and cannot take a state stage. In S.R. Bomai vs. Union of India, the Supreme Court has clearly laid down that secularism is the basic feature of our constitution and it cannot be changed. It was further observed that the secularism is not anything which is anti-God and in India it has a positive meaning. Therefore, the American concept of secularism provided by the First Amendment of U.S. Constitution is not acceptable in India. In India, a wall cannot be established between the religion and state. After analyzing the Indian law, we can say that Indian state is neither pro-religion nor anti-religion, but it treats every religion equally and in matters of religion it is neutral. The Supreme Court in S.R. Bhume explained the concept of secularism under Indian context as under 
religious tolerance and equal treatment of all religious groups and protection of their life and property and the places of their worship are an essential part of secularism enshrined in our constitution. What is the meaning of the word secular has not been explained in constitution, but it has been left undefined as the word is elastic and has been left undefined. The Indian state does not provide any patronage to any religion. The state guarantees the religious freedom to every individual. The Supreme Court in the case of M. Ismail Faroqi versus Union of India while explaining the concept of secularism observed. It is clear from the constitutional scheme that it guarantees equality in the matter of religion to all individuals and groups, irrespective of their faith, emphasizing that there is no religion of the state itself. The preamble of the constitution read in particular with Article 25 to 28 emphasizes this aspect and indicates that it is in this manner the concept of secularism embodied in the constitution scheme as a creed adopted by the Indian people has to be understood while examining the constitutional validity of any legislation on the touchstone of the constitution. Freedom of Religion Article 25 Clause 1 provided that every person has the freedom of conscience and right to profess, propagate and practice the religion of his choice. But this right is not an absolute right. It is subject to certain limitations based on morality, public order or any other acts which violate any fundamental right. Article 25, Clause 2 Subclause A and B lays down the following restrictions on the freedom of religion. The restrictions on this right can be on the following grounds. Number 1. Regulate, restrict any financial, economics or other secular activity which may be associated with any religious practice. Number 2. The state could legislate and make laws with the aim of social reform even if they are in conflict with any religious practice of the religious group. In finding what is essential religious practice, it was to be ascertained with reference to the doctrine of that religion itself. Religion is a matter of faith and its roots are embodied in the belief which one has in his religion. Religion also lays down the code of ethics for its followers and also suggests the prescribed rituals, ceremonies and mode of worship for those who adopt it as their religion. Article 25, Clause 1 protects the rituals and beliefs associated with a particular religion. In Lakshmana case, the Supreme Court explained the extent of Article 25, Clause 1 in the following words. Article 25, as its language explains, assures to every person subject to public order, health and morality, freedom not only to entertain his religious beliefs as may be approved of his judgment and conscience, but also to exhibit his belief in such outward acts as he thinks proper and to propagate or disseminate his ideas for the edification of others. The Supreme Court has in number of cases said that even the religious customs and rituals are protected under Article 25. Depriving a person from performing the Hajj by withholding his travel documents or protecting the customary religious right of his community is protected under Article 25. But there are certain practices which though are treated as religious do not really part of a religion. To protect a practice as a religious practice, one has to establish that the said practice is the integral and essential part of that religion. It means that any practice which is not the essential part of the religion can be abrogated by Article 25. The Supreme Court in H. H. Sirman's case observed that what constitutes an essential part of a religious practice has to be decided by the court with reference to the doctrine of particular religion and include practices which are regarded by the community as a part of its religion. In case of Muhammad Hanif Qureshi was a state of Bihar, the Supreme Court held that the sacrifice of cow on Bakra Eid does not affect the rights of Muslims and 
any ban on it will not infringe the religious freedom of Muslims. In Buri versus State of Jammu and Kashmir, the petitioner challenged the J.K. Mata Vaishnav Devi Shrine Act 1988 on the ground that it violates the religious freedom given under Article 25 and 26. But the court upheld the validity of law and made a distinction between religious services and the person who performs the service. The court said that performance of ritual performances are the part of religious freedom, but the appointment of priestess is not the part of religious freedom. The court in A.S. Narayan versus State of Andhra Pradesh held that the word religion provided in Article 25 and 26 is personal to each individual having faith in a particular religion. The National Education Policy 2002 formulated by the government in 2002 was challenged on the ground that the object of this policy was to saffronize the education in India and in violation of Article 28. But the Supreme Court in Aruna Rai v. Union of India rejected the contention of the petitioners. The court observed as under, democracy cannot survive and constitution cannot work unless Indian citizens are not only learned and intelligent, but they are also of moral character and imbibe the inherent virtues being such as truth, love and compassion. Restrictions on freedom of religion No freedom can be absolute, but it always subject to restrictions. Any right should not infringe the rights of others in the society. Keeping this principle in mind, the Constitution of India has laid down restrictions on this right as well. Restrictions for public order, morality and health. The state can impose the restrictions on religious freedom on the basis of public order, morality and health. In the name of religion, nobody will be allowed to disturb the public order, morality or health. Section 34 of the Police Act was held to be constitutional as in the name of religion no inconvenience can be caused to the public in general. Similarly, nobody is allowed to do the forcible conversions. Similarly, the use of loudspeakers at the time of prayers by a particular community is regulated by the Environmental Protection Act 1986. In case of Lily Thomas, the Supreme Court observed Freedom guaranteed under Article 25 of the Constitution is such freedom which does not encroach upon similar freedom of the other person. One of the important questions which was raised before the Supreme Court was that whether the practice of conversion is within the ambit of religious freedom. The issue was discussed in grave Stain's Laws versus State of Madhya Pradesh in detail. The court held that the law passed by the state legislative was not violative of Article 25. The law passed by the state was to stop forcible conversion and to maintain peace in the society. Application of law to regulate economic, financial, political or secular activities vis a vis religious practices. As far as the application of Article 25 is concerned, the freedom to practice a religion extends only to such activities which are essential part of the religion. The activities which are not essential part of any religion are not covered under this article. Article 25, Clause 2, Subclause A is the explicit explanation which deals with this subject. In case of R. P. Gandhi vs. State of Bombay, the Supreme Court observed that the activities which are of commercial, political or economic in nature cannot be treated as religious activities, though they are associated with a religion. The management of a religious institution is a secular activity which can be regulated by the state. Thus, the Article 25, Clause 2, Subclause A lays down that the state contemplates to state regulations and not religious practices, and it can only regulate the activities which are not associated with a religion. The case of Mohammad Hanif Qureshi vs. State of Bihar is one such example. Social Reforms and Welfare of the People The Constitution has laid down restrictions 
and allows the state to intervene where the state has made certain laws to regulate social reform and welfare of the people. Article 25, Clause 2, Sub Clause B says that state is empowered to make laws for social welfare and social reform. In case of Krishna Singh versus Matra Ahir, the Supreme Court clearly laid down that Article 25 involves a separation between religious activities on the one hand and secular and social activities on the other hand. The state under this law can regulate and take steps to remove the scratch of untouchability from amongst the Hindus. Under this clause, the state is empowered to open all Hindu religious places of public character to all Hindus irrespective of their caste or creed. This allows a Hindu to enter into a temple notwithstanding the fact that he is underprivileged or has some social inequality. A Sikh is entitled to carry one kirpan as a religious mandate, but he cannot insist that he will carry more than one kirpan with him. Management of Religious Affairs Article 26 of the Constitution protects the rights of and religious groups to maintain religious affairs, but this right is subject to morality, health and public order. The group which claims this right under Article 26 will have the following rights. Number 1. A religious group can maintain an institution whose object is religious and charitable in nature. Number 2. Managing its own religious affairs. Number 3. The religious group can have movable property and management of this property will vest with the said religious group. Number 4. Administration of property required in accordance with the law of the country. The right under Article 26 is basically the denomination of the said property. Article 26 further explains the word religious denomination and lays down three conditions which are as Number 1. It must have a collection of some individuals having some belief and which they consider conducive to their spiritual faith. Number 2. It must be a common organization. Number 3. It must be designated by distinctive name. On this basis, the Supreme Court in Brahmachari Sideshwar Bhai vs. State of West Bengal held that the Ramakrishna mission can be given the protection of Article 26 as they fulfill the all conditions laid down by the Article 26. With this, we come to the end of today's program. Hope you have enjoyed the session. For now, it's time to say goodbye.